Hey everybody, it's Hawk here. Great question. Why do people become adventurers? Well, of course, to eat exotic food, see exotic places, and do exotic... <clears throat> Nothing. Sorry, never mind. Um, really, all of these reasons are, of course, applicable. But the biggest one? Money. Money is the biggest driving force to be an adventurer. And as you know, I, in my Why I Would Start to Be an Adventurer, I talked about it probably not being worth it to be an adventurer. Well, I might have been a little hasty on my math there. Uh, and of course, this is going to depend drastically depending on the particular setting you're in. Uh, in D&D, &D, and I'm going to use D&D 3.5 specifically for this because it has the profession skill, and therefore I can figure out what people make for money, give or take. So... In D&D, the profession skill is literally just a skill you can take. I'm going to set this down. I don't need to keep holding on to that. Um, but it's a skill you can invest in, and its skill literally exists to make money, unless it's a profession siege engineer, miner, or sailor, because those actually have in-game uses for random adventuring purposes. So, what happens in that game is, is once per week, you make a check, and you make that, and you make that many gold pieces equal, well, I mean, gold pieces equal to your check, is what it is. So, I roll, let's say I get 23, I gain 23 gold pieces that week. Now, realistically, you're not going to roll because you could roll a 1 and then get, like, no money. Because most people in D&D &D are going to be either commoners or experts, and they're going to be levels 1 to 3, because this is D&D. &D. So, I'm aware this doesn't translate terribly well to an actual universe, but just kind of roll with it. Uh, we can just think about it uh, as people who are slightly more skilled or less skilled, so just don't. Just pretend there are no level 15 commoners with absolutely stupidly high profession skills. So you're either going to have a profession uh, that's going to go from probably about a 4 at the lowest, that's you having 4 ranks at level 1, with no wisdom modifier. I'm not including having a negative because that's going to just confuse math here. So you'll have a 4 there, which means you'll probably get a 14 if you take a 10. It's decent money all the way up to, if you're level 3, maxing out at a 7, and we'll probably think at that point you probably got a plus 1 wisdom. So, that's an 8. That's an 18. So, not a terribly massive variance in cash here. We're going from, well, I guess people who can't have literally no ranks in it, so it'd be 11 gold at the lowest end if you only put one rank in it, to the high end being 20 maybe? Though, frankly, if you have that high of a wisdom, I'm wondering why you're not a priest or something else. Because, really, if you have a tab that high, you should be doing something else. Or possibly other bonuses from uh, really good items, which is entirely possible. And, honestly, there's actual profession skill optimization. It's totally a thing. There's a build called Black Adder. Referencing the show, of course. Anyway. Not here to talk about D&D optimization. So, what that means is, is once per week... Or per week, you can assume your uh, your funds are going to be about 14 gold pieces, give or take. Now, how much actual money is that? It's not a little. I mean, you can buy all your groceries. You can, so you can buy all your groceries. You can save up money. And, and you can live an okay life. It's not going to be, you know, rolling in dough, but... You can definitely survive and live an okay life. Now, by the way, that is profession, meaning you're a miller, you're a cook, you're, you're, you're a trained skill. Now, I know some people put profession farmer, but I don't actually think farmer's supposed to be that way. It's, it sounds more like a service industry thing, is what they refer to it as. Farming's kind of its own thing. So, also, farmers don't make that much money. It's just kind of a sad fact of life. But... So if you don't have profession trained, you can still take a 10 on it, and then you'll have either a 10 or an 11, and that's how many silver pieces you make. Really, that's not a lot of money if you're untrained labor. You don't get a whole lot. So we're going to base our, our comparisons here off of if you are an actual trained professional, as in you're a miller, you're a cooper, you're... Actually, a cooper would probably be craft woodworking. So that's, there's some overlap, but honestly, whatever. You, you make plenty of money doing these sorts of things. So you're at that, you're a tavern keeper, whatever. So you're going to get an okay sum of money. We'll even call a farmer. We'll, we'll, we'll put pressure money in there just to make this easy. So being a farmer, you can expect yourself to make anywhere from 11 to 14 GP, depending on how good of a farmer you are. That's not terrible. It's 
not terribly amazing, but it's not terrible because it's just you. And then, of course, you know, you'll get married, and then your significant other can help in the farming, and they can make their own fresh and roll, and they'll make money too, and you can just keep on doing your thing. And then you'll be okay. Live a nice, what I would call, middle-class life there as far as D&D &D uh, goes. Now, how much do adventurers make? This is an excellent question, and this is entirely dependent upon the job you are performing. Now, in the Sunless Citadel, you are, one of the ways you can do the adventure, because there's several ways to get in, and one of the hooks, and it's the hook I prefer to use, is that you're hired to go into the Sunless Citadel. Because frankly, as an adventurer, you're a mercenary, and this is probably how you're going to get on 90% of your quests early on. You get hired by someone else to go do something. Now, what had happened in that one is another band of adventurers had gone down there, and things went south, as if you've watched any of my other videos, I do mention this quest line, and yes, things go terribly. So, you are hired by the family of two of the adventurers, because they belong to a reasonably well-off merchant family, to go find them, and you get full salvage rights. So all of their equipment, you get to have. Now that means you are already starting off okay here. This is slightly better than most uh, missions where it's like, oh, I need you to go kill goblins, here's a bounty on them. Yeah, you get salvage right there, but again, eh, goblins, how much good crap are they going to have, and how much are you actually... What's the resale value on a goblin spear and goblin armor, right? I wouldn't imagine you'd be terribly good. Now, in this instance, you're going down there, and you're going to go get actual adventuring gear. So you're going to get, like, suits of armor, you're going to get nice swords, it, 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 decent equipment. On top of this, uh, there is a bounty of, per person in the party, 125 gold pieces per signet ring you bring back. There are two signet rings to pick up. And if you bring back the two kids, Hale and Hardy, they will double it. Yes, double it. You read that? Read that. You heard that correctly. Now, in a standard four-person party, because this is generally what they assume you're going to be in, that means each one of you is going to get 250 gold pieces if you do that. Or, sorry, 250 just for the rings, 500 per if you bring them back. Spoiler for it, that's impossible because they've already been corrupted and there's no way to fix that. But anyway, it's 250 gold pieces per person. That's amazing. That's really good. All right, so just think of that. I, let's, let's assume I have none of my extra shit here and I'm just fresh off the farm. So I've got my, let's assume this is a gambism, because I'm not wearing mine today. I've got my gambism, I've got my cloak, I made a spear. I've got some, some basic working knowledge with this. I can, I can do it without embarrassing myself. All right, I feel fairly confident. I'm, I'm, the strong, I'm the strong guy from my village. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go be an adventurer and get famous and make a lot of money. All right, well, honestly, this isn't, this is definitely something to talk about. So I get me, uh, my buddy who's an apprentice at the uh, local church. Uh, we get our other buddy who's uh, the apprentice to the hedge wizard or perhaps the weird magical kid who'd be the sorcerer or what have you, and then we'll probably go find another person to round out our party. Your fourth member can kind of be whatever you want. Rogues are entirely optional if you've played D&D &D long enough. So basically we get our buddies there and we're going, hey, we're going to make a lot of money. All right, so off we go. Now, remember what I said. Average profession check here between 11 and 14. To make math easy, we're going to make it 14. That means doing this job and getting your 250 gold pieces a person, you are getting 18 weeks of pay for what's probably gonna take you a week, maybe. Now, on top of this, assuming best case scenario here where everybody gets 500 GP, okay, uh, that's now 36. Possibly on the morning. It's like 35, 36 ish uh, weeks worth of pay of farm work or other, you know, general labor. That is a ton of money. That is almost an entire year's worth of pay for a week's worth of work. Now, of course, we are not taking into account um, any loot you're going to find. This is not taking into account the fact that, oh, hey, we found a uh, this really nice suit of armor that none of us want to wear, because uh, it doesn't fit, so we're going to go sell that off to somebody else, and then we're going to do this, this, this. You can probably get a year's worth out of just that, and I'm ignoring most of the loot. I'm ignoring you finding anything fancy down there, other than the salvage rights of the adventurers, and maybe a couple of other nice shiny trinkets that the 
Monsters have probably amassed a little bit to themselves because they are living down there, so they are going to have things that might be worth it or not. So, yeah, that's a lot of money. Now, that's the guaranteed money, and that's really all I'm going to talk about because loot's random as hell, and there's no way to know whether you're going to have good loot or terrible loot. I mean, it's entirely possible that you could just fight tons of monsters that don't use loot. Uh, for instance, Wendigos don't really have loot, except maybe the ruins of their corpse of uh, their victims, but they don't really... They're not going to keep that around. Grell are the same way. They don't give a crap about any, you know, material wealth other than stuff they particularly use, and most of that's not terribly useful to you. Um, owlbears? I mean, those are a threat, too, and again, they're not going to... What, what do you get out of them? Uh, nothing other than the money you got for killing them, so you have to work off of that math. And even off of that math, being an adventurer is a fairly lucrative business. It's, yeah. So adventurers can make very good money doing this. And this only gets, uh, this, if you think this is just a, an anomaly, uh, in the Freight at Tristor, which is another low-level adventurer, uh, there is a bounty out to find out what is causing the animal mutilations in the town of Tristor. 1,000 GP bounty. So if me and only, let's say my party gets split up and the other two guys are like, that's it, I'm done with this. So me and uh, our, the priest are like, all right, we're going we're gonna to do one more and then we'll probably be done adventuring for the rest of our lives. So we're going to go split a 500 gold piece bounty, or 1,000 GP ones, we get 500 each between the two of us. So we're walking out of this with 1,000 gold pieces to our name plus any other random equipment we can get our hands on. So we're probably going to walk away with like 12 or 1,300 gold. That's a lot. That is 100 weeks. That's two years of pay. And honestly, you hit that kind of money, you can start investing in things and you can own stuff now. It's not just, oh, hey, I'm going to go resume my farming in a, in a nicer house. No, I can go live in a city. I could probably go invest in some taverns or a small business. And then I can be a wealthy investor now because I was an adventurer at one point. And that's actually what I see a lot of people doing. Going into an adventurer and in D&D terms, maybe getting to level three or four and then done. You're done. You've made a crap ton of money and you're out before things start getting really crazy. Because at these low levels, it's not quite so bad. you got to be really careful, but the appropriate level of paranoia, meaning get a really big weapon and you should be fine. Which is the great joy of this. Because that's probably the best part about being an adventurer. You can pretty much solve any problem by knowing about it. Knowledge is your great we greatest weapon. So, grab a crossbow, get a good backup weapon, maybe a spear, get someone to chuck some spells, get some good coordination between all of you guys, make it as a rather successful group of adventurers. Now, hope you all enjoyed the video. Remember to like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'll see you all later. Peace out.